Additional tap on the hammer. We'll call this meeting of the Board of Selectmen for January 5th, 2015, our first meeting. Happy New Year to everybody, and Happy we'll New start Year. off. Happy New Year. Thank you. We'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. My partner in crime. I know. No, don't so the first uh, order of business, I will ask for um, a motion on the minutes of our December 15th and our December 30th meeting. Well, I can give a, a motion to approve the December 15th uh, open session minutes as written, um, but I will uh, defer the 30th because I was not at the 30th meeting. I was. Uh, so um, a motion to approve the 15th. Second. Okay, motion. Mr. Gordon, so second Mr. Watson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I move to accept the minutes from the meeting of December 30th, the open session minutes as written. Oh, can we even? Oh. <laughs> There's only two people that so, were So, uh, Don. So can I second it? I can't second it. Right? You, you can always, it's just Robert's rule. You can, you have the ability to second. Okay. Just in terms of practice. All right, so I'll second that. Um, there's only three of us who are in, t in attendance. Two, 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 two. Right. Okay. okay, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Two abstentions. Two abstentions. So, um, so both minutes are approved. Great. <clears throat> um, okay, first we'll go through communications and announcements, um, and then Mr. Lyons, we'll go r right to you um, after that. Okay. We'll let you catch your breath. Yeah, we'll let you catch your breath for a minute first. It is cold. <laughs> okay, first on the communications and announcements. Um, Government Finance Officers Association Distinguished Budget Presentation Award once again presented to the town of North Andover. It's good news, of course. We've done that a couple of years ago. We got into the practice of uh, following a standard called the Governor fi Gov Government Finance Officers Association uh, distinguished Budget Award format. Um, it's an important format. It's recognized nationally as sort of the gold standard of presenting your financial material. It goes beyond presenting financial information and includes information about the community. Really uh, transforms the financial document into a communication tool, which from our perspective I know is important to the board that we find a way to communicate with the public what we're doing, not just put numbers on a page, which for some folks is somewhat uncomfortable, but really integrate those that financial information into a broader uh, context, uh, what our missions are, what our mission statement is, what our values are, what our goals are for a particular year. So uh, I want to give Lynn Savage credit. She is the, the sort of primary author of the document, but also all the people that are involved to make sure it happens. So this is now uh, multiple years we've won the award. There are probably, I didn't have the data in front of me, 15 to 17 Massachusetts government entities we receive it out of 351 cities and towns. Right. Do, I, do I have that right? 351? We still at 351? Yeah. 351. Uh, no new ones yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's like top 5%. Yeah. And when you add in other entities like uh, MWRA is an example which also does follow the standard and other agencies, you're close to 400 government agencies in Massachusetts that would be eligible and we're one of 15 or 16 or 17 that get it. So. That's great. And congratulations to fantastic. Lynn and her whole staff. and and your staff, again, for a job very well done. And, and the document is very readable, and, and it is a very nice uh, communication for folks out there that want to take a look at it. It's, it's not all just hardcore accounting numbers, but there's uh, some really good information in there. There's so a great picture you. of the Board of Selectmen right on the front page there. Right? Yeah, there is. Yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah. Pick it up just for that. Yeah. And the town manager. <laughs> he, contributed. he contributed to that picture. Next year, we'll have to have Lynn in the picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make it a group, group photo. Group photo. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, any other communications or announcements? Anything coming up in the month of January that we should be, make people aware of? Just got off the holiday, so it's probably kind of quiet at this point. I'm yeah. having a hard time with re-entry, so. <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah. Well, we just know, uh, just uh, so the folks at home know, uh, Mr. Stewart is under the weather. Yes. And so he's not here this evening, and um, since... He's very reliable about being here. It's simply just he's not feeling well today. So, I miss my okay. as we all miss Donnie tonight. Uh, Mr. Chair, on Saturday, December, I mean January 24th. 24th, thank you. Um, there's going to be a family skating event at the outdoor skating rink at the youth center. Uh, there'll be music and hot chocolate and a bunch of activities. So, um, I. 
I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> if you go to the Youth Center website or if you go to the town's <laughs> website and on the right click on the uh, Youth and Recreation Services News, uh, it'll be in there. But it's, this is the first event uh, that they're having. Uh, and is that the official opening or is it open? No, it's, no, it's, a, it, it. it's no, they replaced the liner and I'm thinking with this cold weather this yeah, week, it'll, uh, it'll be plenty of time for skating. So the, it will be open prior to the It'll 24th. be open prior to that, so but it's a family, skate, uh, family skating it's event a on the uh, Saturday the 24th. And do, the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, do, you, do we know the hours of operation normally for the arena? Um, no, it's posted It's posted on the Youth Center website. Okay, great. I think these are pretty liberal, actually. Yeah, pretty much the lights yeah, are on at night, night and it's uh, the lights are on. The day at any time. Really, they're, they're, they prevent you from going on if the conditions aren't right, because right. if it's too it. too warm, you, you can... Uh, uh, ruin the ice and um, fall, in. fall in, you know. Well, you, yeah. you, gouge, you gouge out the liner. You gouge out the liner. If the ice is thin. And it creates ruts. Uh, yeah. That sort of thing. But I do have a question. Um, is there a charge for the, nope. the charging? It's free? Nope. It's free. It's uh, uh, through the uh, courtesy of, um, I may get this wrong, Peter Breen and, and Downer Brothers, yeah. I believe. Um, we, they actually uh, paid for a replacement of the liner because the liner was in storage and it got eaten up by rodents. Or chewed up, so uh, both companies paid for a replacement liner, and they're the ones who set it up, etc. And the fire department then will flood it Thank you, if Bruce. they haven't done so already. Thank you, Donna Brothers and uh, Mr. Breen, Peter Breen. Very generous, always. familiar, familiar names mm -hmm. yep. for donations to the youth center. It's great. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, um, the North End of a High School swim team had their first polar plunge on New Year's Day. I heard it went great. Hopefully it's bigger and better next year. Uh, but they did raise some money for the team. And um, yeah, they're hoping for a bigger and better one next year. Crazy people, but they did it. They the, were in there. I heard the school committee went in with them, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but good for them. OK, great. I was going to ask about that. Thank you. Uh, any other communications, announcements? I picked up my Christmas tree today, right there on the side of the street. Yes, mine was blowing down the street, mm -hmm. but we got it back. Oh, and bravo, I thought they did a great job with this weird little storm we had. They were out right away, and they were out again last night nervous. to make sure. I was a little, I was nervous, a little nervous, too. When it wasn't I thought they did a good job. But last night they the cleaned it all up, and uh, yeah. I would help ask people to, uh, you know, in spite of the town's good effort to um, take care of the roads and the sidewalks around the schools, is shovel your sidewalks. Uh, um, and if you can't do it, or if your neighbor can't do it, shovel their sidewalk for them just to um, make it easier for everyone to get around. Good advice. Okay, we'll move ahead then. Um, we're going to invite Representative Jim Lyons to the table here and talk about some of the FY15, FY16, I'm sorry, priorities. Thank you. And, um, for letting me come in tonight. Happy New Year to everybody. A little chilly out there. It's only going to get colder this week. It's going to be 12 degrees out, I heard. Um, yeah, I wanted to take an opportunity just to quickly review um, some numbers that we talked about last year and then basically uh, ask, ask the board and uh, the town manager to kind of take a look at the priorities and not necessarily to give them to me tonight, but you know, I'm very excited going forward, uh, you know, in 2015, um, you know, we, we have a new governor and I think it's a time for us to be optimistic about, you know, some of the things that, that might happen and, and particularly to our, to our local communities. Um, so what I thought we would look at first is just to give you the state budget overview, which is just to kind of let everyone know, and I know most of this information you're very familiar with, 
but it, it basically outlines spending at the state level from 2009 through the fiscal year 2015. And state spending actually went up by 23% in that period of time. And um, if you look at the town of North Andover from the, on that same uh, timeline, you see that, that increased aid to our local community was only 2.75%. So the state was growing, and you folks at the local level had to basically do with what you had in 2009. And one of the things that we talked about last year when we met was a proposal that, that we had tried to get through the House, which was uh, a different uh, part of uh, funding. It, we've got the Chapter uh, 70, we've got unrestricted aid, we've got other funds, but what we filed as Republicans was a piece of legislation which I attached to this which was basically to increase money back to the cities and towns to the tune of $250 million. And if you look at the chart for North Andover, it'll, it would have increased the amount of funding to North Andover by $464,000 um, just last year. And that was, that was defeated pretty much along, along party lines. Uh, and the reason I wanted to bring that forward, because you folks had sent a letter in the town of North Andover and the other towns in, in my district sent letters in encouraging, you know, this kind of commitment back to our local communities. As, as we all know, you know, most of the services that people receive are, are at the local level, public works, police, fire, education. However, as we are seeing, history has now shown us that in the last, since 2009, what we've done is seen a bureaucracy of exp explode on Beacon Hill. And quite frankly, that doesn't really benefit our local community. So I wanted to get a jump start on this, you know, let you know we're filing that legislation again. Uh, and people say, well, where are you going to fund it? How are you going to fund, you know, we've got a $750 million shortfall right now. How are you going to fund this? And one of the things that we were asking Governor Patrick for, for three years was to tell us where the money was going. And for some reason, he just refused to do it. So what we're hoping to do is take a look at where our tax dollars are going and where they're being spent. There's a huge percentage of our, of our money, 6 or 7%, currently going to people who are either not following the rules or aren't eligible to benefits. So what we took a, a look at was how much money that was on the total budget, and it's roughly $2 billion. So the proposal that we were starting was to shift the money away, not to take it all away all at once, but to shift it away from those who aren't entitled to the benefits and get it back to our cities and towns so they could provide the, the services that are necessary and also property tax relief, something that we were promised back in 2006. So in any event, that's, that's kind of what I wanted you to know, that we're doing the, the, you know, the, the same thing that we did last year, but we do feel that you know, there's, there seems to be a stronger sentiment out there on both sides of the aisle. A lot of folks who ran for office this time uh, told us that they were interested in increasing aid to our cities and towns. So what we're hoping is that we can bring some of these Democrats along, along with us because long term, if we continue the way it's been going, our communities are going to be under constant, as I don't have to tell you, under constant pressure just to, to make ends meet. So it's a focus. Uh, Governor-elect Baker has indicated uh, in trying to solve this budget shortfall that he's inherited. Uh, he's not going to cut local aid and he's not going to increase taxes. And I think he's going to look at, try to find some efficiencies and try to really uh, move the state in a different direction. But the reason I came was in addition to tell you what we're going to try to do is to, to kind of hear what you folks thought were important, the local aid package that we're talking about and anything that you folks were interested in. So as we the budget's going to be put together relatively quickly. I'd like to be able to say that I've met with my, my boards and, and to find out, you know, what's important to you. Well, I think, as you said, the, um, the local aid is huge because that helps keep downward pressure on property taxes. Um, people expect a certain level of service, um, and they're entitled to it. They pay good money in taxes, and um, with the potential of, of cuts or not getting that money restored, as you said, since 2009, they haven't restored right. that local aid. Um, I think you're right on the money with that issue. Um, and uh, thank you for taking the, the fight to, the, to Beacon Hill. Um, they need to hear this. Um, you know, we can spend the money much better right. than the bureaucrats at Beacon Hill. Right. We see it. We know where it goes. 
So I, I think it's great. Okay, thank you. Do you think a letter to? Yeah, I think, our if, I think that would be great, you know, pointing out, you know, the kind of pressure that, you know, that, that local communities are under. I mean, just take a look at that. I mean, it's such a stark difference. 23% increase in spending, 2.75% to our cities and towns. I mean, that really speaks volumes as to as to where the priorities have been on Beacon Hill. So I think coming from each of the boards saying that, you know, they, they really believe that increasing aid to our communities should be a, a big priority. I think it is a big priority to the to the new administration, but to let our all of our elected officials know uh, on Beacon Hill that communities now really have seen what's happened and it's time to move it in a new direction. So yes, I, the answer is. At uh, Representative Lyons, thank you for coming. Uh, okay. Certainly appreciate uh, our delegates, uh, you know, coming to speak with us and, and uh, keeping the communication open. This, um, you know, certainly the, the stark contrast between the 23% increase in overall spending and then uh, locals, uh, you know, just our town, 2.75% uh, increase over that same time period is um, pretty startling, you know. Uh, but my question is, um, so uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to, uh, uh, you know, this would be very nice to have $464,000 extra in our budget, but we don't necessarily operate like that. We uh, try to budget very conservatively, uh, and in doing so, we've uh, done a good job uh, at holding the line and, and uh, um, you know, I think uh, with the help of the town manager and the board's direction, you know, being very conservative with our budget. Um, do when when and uh, when uh, it is decided what the amounts that local cities and towns get is there is that a formula that happens or do they look at well North Andover is doing uh, you know has so much in stabilization or whatever maybe they don't need as much locally does that ever come into play or is it purely just a formula that uh, irregardless of how we are managing our our budget um, the numbers are decided without looking at that. Yeah, no, the, the, there's strict formulas that are put in place, Chapter 70 money and unrestricted local aid are tied into a direct formula. So when they put aside a certain amount of money, you can look and, and each community will have a certain amount of money that they would be receiving back in aid. And as far as I know, there's very, there's no, um, Right. right. In other words, uh, right. is that, you know, I think so I, bad. Can, can why we, should we be punished exactly. for, for doing a good job? That's what I'm exactly. saying. Okay, That's so. exactly what's happening too. Yeah. By the way, is, and and I, I don't want you to think that I'm coming in and saying that we're going to increase aid to not the end of the next year by four hundred sixty-four thousand yeah. dollars, yeah. because we couldn't get it passed last year. Yeah. But what I am yeah. saying is what I said last year, is that we have to shift the way we st spend our state dollars away from building a huge bureaucracy on Beacon Hill to recognizing that the services that are most of our citizens receive are at the local level. So things like that don't happen overnight, but having communities tied into understanding, you know, how bad, how, how bad it is. In other words, when you look at that, as you just pointed out, that's startling, you know. So we have to let people know on Beacon Hill that there needs to be a shift back to our cities and towns, there has been a clear shift since the Patrick administration took over away from our cities and towns. And what we want to do is continue to, you know, advocate for, on the behalf of our local communities. We need a leaner, more efficient state government, too. I mean, because our, our local folks also benefit from state programs, so there, there has to be that balance. But the 23% increase over a 2.75% increase is absolutely stark, startling, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but many of our residents do what I'd like to see at the state level, and I have, I have great hope over the next four years that we will see a, a leaner and far more efficient state government, which will benefit the local cities and towns. Um, you can't just keep filling positions, filling positions without without those actually affecting the people of the Commonwealth. So I'm um, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you, Jess. So you know, people say when you look at the state bureaucracy, they've increased in the number of jobs, eleven thousand new jobs at the same time that they're they're not giving us any money to our communities. And we've also seen 
we may have increased 11,000 employees at the state level, but um, we have a heroin epidemic throughout the state, and, and, and where are we, are we addressing that? We've had issues in numerous state agencies, and you know, it's one thing that to, 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 to fatten, for lack of a better term, uh, the state government if it's effective. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not just the state. We're actually, this region is like the hub Oh, absolutely. Of the heroin. Um, and we're we're known we're, we're known as not North Andover, but not far from here is right. known as the place to buy the, the, the most inexpensive heroin and they're coming from outside the state. It's really, really troubling. Um, so we've been certainly touched by it as well. So I think yeah. you know, as far as my priorities, that's, that's got to be one of the highest priorities is what can we do to try to attacking this problem at the core and, and, and stopping, you know, our, our kids and our young adults from dying. Every time you we get it's take so a cheap. Paper. It's it's affecting everybody. Rich, I, I mean I couldn't agree more. I mean uh, I've personally spoke to the governor elect about this issue and uh, and it is an absolute priority of his and uh, I'm hoping to work you know work with him uh, and uh, Attorney General elect um, Mara Healy has made it a priority of hers. So I, I, I completely agree. And, um, you know, I've met with uh, different police chiefs uh, within the district. And, um, you know, it has to be a, a community-wide, statewide effort to, to try to attack this. Our kids are dying, and, and it's, it's, a, it's tragic. I think, uh, Representative, if we can, you know, this is obviously, given the current fiscal situation at the state level, uh, it'll be very difficult in fiscal 16 to achieve. Uh, I think a lot of us are looking at level funding, right. let alone increases. Th there are a number of initiatives that the board has communicated over the years which uh, continue to sort of straggle out there. And in any way you can help, I'm sure the board would appreciate it. Um, everything from retirement reform, in which although there was a blue ribbon uh, committee that talked about retirement reform, the legislature itself has not enacted uh, meaningful retirement reform in terms of really changing the game in a way like they did with health insurance quite frankly mm -hmm. health insurance uh, legislation uh, the change in the health insurance legislation that allowed us to to negotiate with our unions in a more effective way was probably the most meaningful piece of legislation to local communities in the last two decades uh, similar legislation for retirement reform would be helpful our ability to manage what is now um, the second fastest growing cost in our budget while we deal with hopefully growing Growing revenue streams would be helpful. The prevailing wage has been something that this board has focused on for a number of years. Any kind of change, so we get out of the sort of first dollar spending role, even if it's things that I don't, uh, wouldn't seem to face the same kind of opposition um, f from unions and others. If we started at reasonable dollar thresholds, you know, 10,000, 15,000, at least began a serious dialogue about that kind of change would be also extremely helpful in terms of our ability to manage ourselves. I think that's one of the struggles that the board, all boards face, elected boards, is the, the fact that we read often we're in a home rule state. We don't, don't often feel like we're ruling the home, right? right? That it's dictated from the state downward. So any initiatives legislatively that allow us, to allow this board to really manage the community in the way that they have a strong interest to do and have sh demonstrated they have a strong interest to do would be helpful. Um, th those are a couple of examples, fairly large ones, but I think uh, important ones to the community. I Thank you. As, as you know as well, 40B is always a concern in North Andover. We've got this big project coming on and potentials of others coming on, and it's just, it's too much for us to absorb all the needs that these new families are going to need. Um, they, they just don't seem to calculate affordable housing right at Beacon Hill. They don't count existing housing unless there's some sort of government intervention on it. It's, and it hurts. We've had this discussion as I've testified at the State House with you. Um, yeah, it's, um, they've, got to, they've got to count the affordable that's privately owned because those people are getting hurt. Right. These new buildings are coming up and then they can't sell their condo. Um, it's just, it really needs to be rehabbed. Um, I, I think really this is an opportunity as I as you look as we look forward we, we we can look back to you know where we were in 06 and see how things changed in a way that you know some of us don't agree with 
if we look forward now, you know, we, hopefully we have four years, maybe eight years, where we can look down the road and say, all right, can we put some of these initiatives in place? Can we really begin to, you know, create a new dialogue as to how state government ought to, ought to work? And I think the input from you folks to us and to the other members of the delegation, you know, pointing this, you know, the issues that you've just brought up in, 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 in written form would be extremely helpful because when we go into a caucus with, you know, now we go into a caucus as Republicans with the governor, you know, to have a letter from the folks of North Andover, the Board of Selectmen and the town manager, I mean, and I, that's, that's a lot for me to be able to say, look, at, you know, he knows, he's, he's been a selectman, he's been there, he sat there, he understands. So it really is, it's, I think it's a real opportunity for us, you know, to, to take a look, you know, maybe not this year, but down the road to move the state into a direction that we can start to do some of the things that you folks have talked about. At least to begin meaningful conversations right. about these things. Exactly. I will, um, as we traditionally do, draft something yep. based on discussions with the board and then the board um, modifies it as they see appropriate. Two other things that the board has raised in the past, and I know the school committee has as well, uh, the special education circuit breaker yep. uh, needs to continue to be a focus. Um, it, it seems to be a second, an afterthought, uh, a result of what's left. And quite frankly, if there's one part of education funding which is most constant across the Ma about across Massachusetts, is that we all have families that have uh, kids that need special education, and uh, whether that's in district or out of district, and yet that's what gets funded as an afterthought. It gets funded at the end when there's a decision of what's left. It seems to me that the special education discussion uh, certainly has been conveyed by this board and by the school committee uh, needs to take a more prominent role. And whether that's legislative change in terms of um, funding special education or whether it's a circuit breaker itself, there needs to be a more uh, direct focus on special education and how it's impacting the districts here in the community. We're fortunate that we're thinking proactively about reserve funds to manage the special education costs. But for all of us, regardless of the nature of the district, whether it's in Berkshire County or here in, in Essex County, we face the same kinds of issues. And there's not many issues that are common, right? Um, and one of the challenges you have as a representative is representing this area and then communicating with other representatives who, who may not understand the issues you face here. Uh, special education, not unlike retirement reform is, uh, reform, is one of those issues which, um, which goes beyond a geographic boundary and is, and is of particular importance. And I think there continues to be chatter that there's going to be a review of the Chapter 70 formula, which makes some of us, certainly in those districts that, that haven't necessarily gotten to the uh, guaranteed minimum, right. um, uh, nervous about what the new formula will hold. So uh, I'm sure the board, when they communicate uh, with the support of the school committee, will indicate that, that uh, moving forward, we need to be funded at an equitable level. We, we, we talk about means testing, and there isn't means testing. Well, there is. There's means testing in the form of Chapter 78, right? right. And if there's going to be means testing, that, then the legislative uh, requirements need to be met so that it's not means testing and, oh, by the way, communities like North Andover are, are going to uh, not uh, be funded to the level that was required under the statute. I think if the legislature makes a commitment to communities, if we like it or not, they should honor the commitment. And I think that's one of the things that's impacted this community adversely over the years. I completely agree. I mean, target share is, a, is, a, is an issue that, you know, you know, we've been filing additional legislation. They did fund it a little bit uh, better a couple of years ago. Uh, I mean, absolutely, the f foundation budget, they should be at 17.5%. That should be the minimum. And that's a huge amount of money to communities like North Andover and Andover and, and Boxford and, and not, not as much to a town like, city, a town like Tewksbury. But I complete completely that that's what, exactly what we ought to do. And the funding for that particular line item statewide to bring those communities up is literally under $100 million. Now, on a $36 billion budget, that's about fairness, being fair to communities that do a good job. And, yeah, I will push very aggressively on that. And I think, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm very optimistic that maybe not in the short term, but long term, I really believe we can move the, move the needle towards uh, our communities getting, getting properly funded. Can I 
So Representative Lyon, I'd like to also thank you for coming in tonight. Um, I think this board and our legislative team have worked well together uh, oh, yeah. collaboratively. Uh, we've got some things in the past that we've worked together well on and, and gotten some traction on, namely the Merrimack College project, um, making that a little bit safer in that area, the uh, BMI project, <laughs> uh, or reforms, I guess we can call BMI reforms. <laughs> Well, we had our own <laughs> local star on that one, so uh, we, you know, we want to thank you for that and, and the other work you've done. Uh, some of the other things that we've discussed in the past is some, um, you know, looking for some strong support from the state, and I don't know quite what that would be in yet for, for, for supporting the infrastructure from Route 125 to, to you know, build that corridor mm -hmm. out as the next or as a, as a potential for economic development in this area. I believe that pro property's changed hands recently or it, is, it seems to be being marketed again. I see some new signs out there. So that area is something that we've always wanted to um, build out on and, and really look into what can be done up there. So that's sewer line in there for us. We'd appreciate yeah, 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 that. That would help. Let's, let, let's, let's, you know, let's take a look at adding all those things to the list so we, we've got it and, you know, and who, who knows. We'll, we'll commit to that list to get to that list in the next couple of weeks. Um, what is your deadline for that, for filing legislation? Uh, the deadline for filing uh, new legislation is January 16th. So uh, we can always file budget amendments, but, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you had an opportunity in the next week or two to get me, you know, get, get us something and share it with the other delegation members, that, that would be great. But. Yeah, it would really be I'm helpful. I'm happy to have just to see some meaningful conversation begin this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, <laughs> you know? I am too, yeah. And, I, 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 and I'm optimistic. I'm I very too. optimistic. I mean, I, I, I think our delegation, which is a, a split team, <laughs> right. you know, um, is great and, and has been very good to North Hanover and has worked very well with us. And um, um, I, I, I hope. I hope we see more of that on Beacon Hill yeah. as time goes on. It's, it's, it's good for the Commonwealth period for us to work together. So I'm, I'm again, very pleased. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for, very much for having me. Thank you for, uh, it, like I said, if there's any, if you ever have any questions or anything that you'd like to let us know, please, we're always uh, looking to hear from our local communities. Any other questions or comments? That January 16th date. Well, thank you, Laura. Thank you very much for getting me on the agenda. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank Happy you very much. Year. Happy New Year, folks. Happy New Year. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Ganji. Nice <laughs> to see you as well. Okay. Good night. Good night. Okay, we'll move on to consent items. Um, First is a donation from James and Maria Rossetti to the police department for one hundred dollars. Move that the board of selectmen accept a donation from James and James and Maria Rossetti for one hundred dollars to the police department for any needed service or materials the department may require. Motion, Bill Good. <coughs> we have a second, Rosemary. And just to say, I, I believe this is an annual donation. I looked yeah. at the, the notes from last year, and yeah. they they donated one hundred dollars last okay, year. So. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Second one is a donation for six thousand three hundred ninety dollars from the Joseph N. Your Herman Youth Center Inc. to the Youth and Recreation Services for North End of a Center Scholarship. Or youth Center Scholarships. I apologize. Move that the board of selectmen accept a donation from the Joseph N. Herman Youth Center Incorporated to the Youth and Recreation Services for Youth Center Scholarships. Second. Okay. Motion bills. Second. Tracy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I believe this next one is also another annual donation, uh, $500 from Elizabeth Strong to the fire department. Move that the Board of Selectmen accept the donation from Elizabeth, Elizabeth Armstrong of $500 to the fire department in support of the emergency response team. I'll second that. Okay, motion, Bill. Second, Rosemary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And the final one, accept the donation of $25 from Chandra and Usha Prakash. Uh, to the police department. Move that the Board of Selectmen accept the donation for, uh, from Chandra and Usha Prakash of $25 to the police department for any needed service or materials the department may require. Motion bill, second Rosemary, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Thank you all. Yes, thank you for those generous donations. If I could make one comment, um, as we're also aware that the Leland's 
have always been so generous to this town uh, for police and fire and other, thi and other things. Um, Mr. Leland passed away uh, about a week or so ago, so I just want to offer our condolences to his wife Nancy and their family. They've been, you know, lifelong resident, terrific man, and uh, again, just continuously so generous, unsolicited donations. Yeah. Um, so again, our condolences to the Leland family. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Next on the list, um, request to dispose of surplus IT department items. All right, items from the IT department. We have a memo. Yeah, we have a memo. I think there were two items on the memo. Mm -hmm. Yes, two desktop computers. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request of IT Director Matt Killen to dispose of surplus computer equipment per his memo to the town manager dated December 23rd, 2014. Motion okay. Tracy, second bill. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Matt's not taking those on the way out, is he? <laughs> so is this our last memo from Matt? Can you have them? What's, 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 what's that joke? <laughs> what kind of computer do you have and don't say white? <laughs> you know the, the old one. <laughs> Stan got it. Thank you, Stan. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. <laughs> we got one in the basement that could go to the Smithsonian, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the next is uh, appointment. And appointments are good. For um, the Veterans Graves Officer, um, the appointment is for Neil Patnod. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you if you can, just before moving the question, uh, it contained in your package is a letter from uh, Veterans Services Agent Mr. Mitchell, Chief Mitchell. Uh, it probably would make some sense to read this to put it in context. Okay. Um, would you like me to read the camera? Sure, you can. You're already at that page. So, so, so. so this is from um, Chief Edward Mitchell, uh, Director of Veterans Services. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I recently received a phone call from Mary Pelletier, the wife of North End of our Veterans Graves Officer, uh, Philip Pelletier, explained that due to medical complications, Philip Pelletier may, must officially resign from his position as Veterans Graves, Graves Officer, effective January 1st, 2015. Um, Phil Pelletier has uh, been an exceptional Graves Officer for nearly six years and an outstanding member of the Patriotic Observance Committee and Festival Committee for even longer. His commitment to the community was unyielding and our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. With Phil Pelletier resigning as Chief, uh, excuse me, as Graves Officer, I would like to nominate Army Veteran Neil Patnod to assume the duties of North Andover Veterans Graves Officer. Mr. Patnard is a resident of North Andover and meets all requirements as outlined in Mass General Law 115, Section 9, and is ready to assume the duties immediately. For additional information, uh, contact Chief Mitchell. So uh, I'd like to formally thank Mr. Pelletier for his service, and um, both offer all of his service to the veterans, as the Veterans Graves Officer and the Patriotic Observance Committee and the Festival Committee and wish him um, all the best. And um, with that, I think we can make a motion then to uh, accept Mr. Patton on. Um, I'll make the motion to, um, I've, if everybody else wants to do the motion, you're more than welcome to. I've done a lot of the motions. I'm good. I'm good. You're good. Okay. You're clerk. I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Neil Patnod as Veterans Graves Officer for a term ending June 30th, 2017. Did you notice when I was reading Chief Mitchell's thing, I tried to do it like Chief Mitchell? <laughs> because it's the second time in a row I've had a really Chief oh, Mitchell yeah, thing, for, and for. he does such a good job at it, but <laughs> he does. I didn't do a good job at it. Though. I think it's, I'll second that, mm -hmm. but I just want to say that I don't know if people understand that the Graves Officer is actually a pretty important position, and it shows a great deal of respect to those who have served this great country of ours and have pa since passed, and, and he's the one who makes sure that, I mean, up, you know, weeding, not just putting out flags, making sure that their graves are in, um, never in disarray, and that they are treated, um, you know, in the afterlife as the, uh, with the respect that they should be. So I, I, I'm, I'm personally very thankful that that people step forward and do this for our community. It's, Again, it's a big job. Without the volunteers, this town would screech to a halt. <laughs> and uh, Phil Pelletier has done a great job over the last few years. Certainly so. has. Thank you. So we have a motion. Uh, from Bill and a second from Tracy to appoint Neil Patnod as the Veterans Grave Officer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed, so it's unanimous. 
Um, okay, next consent item. Designation of Finance Director Lynn Savage as person with authority to receive forfeiture funds and other assets pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 94C, Section 47. Hey, Mr. Chairman, on occasion we receive forfeiture funds or assets through the police department primarily, and town council has recommended that we accept the statute named Lynn Savage as the designee in those cases. Move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Finance Director Lynn Savage as the person who has the authority to receive forfeiture funds and other assets pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 94C, Section 47. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay. So, <clears throat> the next uh, item on the agenda is one that a uh, great pleasure to do this year, and I think we've had a pleasure to do it the last two or three years, well, I, for three years anyway that I've been involved, uh, is to provide the annual performance evaluation for our, our town manager. Um, so first I'd like to thank you for your service and the uh, incredible work you do for the town. Um, the, um, the evaluation was a very, very, very good. I won't go through all of it. In fact, I'm missing the first page. But out of a possible score of 20, you had a uh, received a 19.3 um, in the consolidated uh, sections and consolidated uh, areas, which include personal development, planning, team player, and conduct at meetings. Um, so, all of those in all those areas, you scored very highly, and we really appreciate the work you do and um, the way you conduct yourself and the way you lead this town on a day-to-day -day basis. So I uh, could not be more more happy with your performance. And I know it's reflected uh, through the town people as well. Um, I think, as I've said in the past, when, you know, I know you, you inspire great confidence when you speak at town meeting and, and people are very, very confident in your in your ability to lead this town. So thank you very much. I won't read through all of the comments. Um, they're all quite positive. Uh, they are available uh, for public viewing. Oh, there's the overall ratings right there. <laughs> there are, there, I think it was moved. It was moved, yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, think you're right. I wasn't informed of the movement <laughs> of the overall ratings. I think ratings. I caught that late in the day that it had been uh, moved. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, again, thank you very much for the work you do. and, and we are very fortunate to have you on board with this town, and I'll open up the board for comments. Uh, um, one, of, one of the most important things that I think a selectman can do during their tenure, um, if, if it arises, is choose an executive um, a, a leader for the community, whether it be a chief or a town manager. And I am um, very proud to have been a part of hiring you. and. Every day, you show me that it was the right choice from the very beginning. And um, I learn from you. I think that um, our staff and employees learn from you. And I think that um, um, the future is bright. And I thank you for all your efforts and energy that you put into our community. I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> Keep it up. Okay. Attaboy. 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 Yeah, yeah I, I have to say from, from my perspective, to see you have a plan mm -hmm. laid out and watching you just tick away, done, next one, done, and even coming in um, better than you even projected that you would. You know, the expectations, um, it's great. I mean, I, uh, you know, people will say to me, you know, see them in the stores, so how is things going? I'm like, you know what? We're really doing pretty good. The town is really moving in the right direction. We're, um, you know, our, our, our reserves, our goals are all being met. Um, when we watch other communities still faltering and struggling and we are just still moving right along, I think our next biggest goal is that I think this board tries to do over and over and even with, with getting thrown some curveballs from the state with maybe not enough um, uh, funding coming from the state or businesses that have chosen to move out of the area. We've still work very hard at keeping taxes low and we'll continue to do that. And I think because of all the work that you've done, we've actually been able to, um, you know, hold the line as best we can under the current circumstances. But the future is bright. We're seeing interest in, in um, some of the businesses that have left. Um, and uh, I think it's all good and I think you've done a great job. 
Well, I'm the lucky one. Um, you guys demonstrated a remarkable level of trust to the new guy, who was me three years ago, and, and gave me the latitude to work with you and come up with some plans, which I'm sure the first time you wondered what the heck I was talking about, and, and um, fortunate to have that kind of support at the beginning, which makes it easier. Um, I, the staff themselves has tolerated uh, my idiosyncrasies and sometimes my uh, need to have everything in a plan and have um, worked uh, diligently and open-mindedly as well to, to make sure that those things get implemented. So it's, you just can't do this, the kind of work I think we've been able to do without uh, mutual respect and trust and good relationships. And um, in the end, if we uh, foster those relationships and, and we um, continue working together in a way that we're, doesn't mean we always have to agree, it just means we're all trying to work toward the same goal, you know, what's better for this community. This is a fantastic community. Uh, um, it's my pleasure to work here, except when the wind blows in the curtain up there, it's a little scary, but uh, it's, it's truly my pleasure to work here and work for this board, and I very much appreciate the sh support that you folks have shown and the community has shown and my staff has shown, so I, I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, right, big crowd. It's a big, I, I know. <laughs> packed house tonight. So I think um, now that we've probably made you the most uncomfortable I've ever seen you. I know, I know. Talk, and <laughs> I, I think you'd rather handle any kind of a union um, negotiation than, than, than that. So now we know that we'll try to even make it more uncomfortable for you yeah. next year. Um, so uh, I'll have a mo I'll hear a motion. Don's not here. Mm -hmm. Oh, do we accept? Do we have a full? Yeah, we accept. We accept. Put it right up. I was like, we already at the end. Where's Don? <laughs> Let's Washington go. Washington. 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 Washington.
You can send them no, to no, no, um, no, 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 no. The, uh, the town manager's mailbox, I think. Yes. That's, um, that's how it began. That's it, was, it was questions that were coming. Right. So anybody so that has a question, um, and if you want to keep it anonymous, you can keep it anonymous. Yes. If you want your name read, you can have your name read as well. But certainly, as I said, if you have a question, I'm sure other people have the same question, so don't hesitate to ask. We do have a section on the agenda for it each meeting. Making it one final thing, um, it seems minor, but it's important in terms of our long-term strategy. We've been attempting to add more content to the town, which is north underscore and over Twitter feed. Mm. And we've seen an increase of 900 followers to 1,030 followers in about four or five weeks. So our goal is to try to engage as many of our residents and others through social media. We're finding we get a pretty good reaction when we post things. It allows us to communicate in a different fashion. So for those folks at home who want to uh, participate, share, uh, join along, feel free to find us on Twitter. And we connected our Twitter feed to our Facebook page so that we, we stay up to speed on that. So our goal in the long term is maybe to get to 2,000 or 2,500 followers on the North Andover Twitter feed. And so if anybody has an interest, feel free to, to follow us on Twitter. And, and the goal is to get the followers, and, and the goal on our side is to get the message out there and get the information that will help you and, and hopefully provide good information for you on what's going on in the inner workings in the downtown area. So Knowledge thank is you power. For that. Yep. Okay, anything else on the town manager report? No? Nope. Okay, our next meeting will be Monday, January 26th. Um, with that, I'll hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, Donnie would be Happy proud of us. Yeah,